Stay tuned for Big Town at 9 p.m. Now, Fibber McGee and Molly. The Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Johnson Wax and Johnson Self Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> I wonder whether you've tried the liquid floor wax with the magic dry cleaning ingredient. It's Johnson's liquid cleaning and polishing wax. Johnson's liquid wax dry cleans your floor first, then polishes that floor to a beautiful luster. You just apply Johnson's liquid wax, give a little extra attention to very grimy spots, and dirt is gone. Then zip over that surface with a dry cloth and look at that floor. It has a warm, lustrous finish. The kind of finish you can get only when your floor is cleaned and wax polished. Johnson's liquid wax protects your floor, too. Makes it easy to keep clean. And when the wax does become worn in spots that are constantly used, it's easy to touch them up. A new application blends in perfectly with the rest of the waxed surface. As for Johnson's liquid cleaning and polishing wax. No other wax gives you the same effective dry cleaning action. On the calendar at 79 Wistful Vista, there's a ring around February 8th. Mr. McGee put the ring there, and now Mr. McGee doesn't remember what makes February 8th so important. <laughs> Let's see him fumble his way out of this one as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Well, Tootsie, you know what day this is? Yes, Tuesday. Uh, it's also February 8th, kiddo. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. Don't February 8th mean anything to you? What does it mean to you? Oh, come on, Snooky. Don't play coy with old twinkle-eyed, ruddy-faced dads. I got a ring around it on the calendar. You know very well what February 8th is. Don't you? Dearie, what I'm more interested in at the moment is how you wear your, wear your socks out like this. Oh? Look, toes and heels both gone. Mm. What do you do, track mountain lions in your stocking feet? <laughs> that last pair of shoes I bought are too big. I can take three steps before the shoes start to move. <laughs> Besides, anybody that bowls as much as I do... Hey, where are you going? Upstairs and get some more darning cotton. Oh. This will be a prosperous year for the South if you keep wearing your socks out like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, where's the phone? Oh, here, right where it always is. Hello, operator. Give me Doc Gamble's office at 14th and Oak and hurry. It's an emergency. Hello, Doc. This is Egg Face. Huh? I know, but I thought I'd say it before you did. <laughs> Look, Doc, I'm in a jam. I got today marked on my calendar, and I don't know what for. Huh? No, it can't be our wedding anniversary. That was in the summertime. Sure, I'm sure. Molly had a bee in her corsage, and when I smelled of it, I got stung on the nose. And... Huh? Her birthday. Oh, my gosh, I never thought of that. No wonder she was clamming up about it. Gee, thanks, Doc. Look, I'll whip up a party. Well, I'll surprise her. I'll... Uh, oh, oh, look out. Here, here, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh, okay, Waldo. I'll take care of it first thing tomorrow. Okay, Waldo. Goodbye. <laughs> Who's Waldo? Waldo Simmons. Caretaker at the Elks Club. Oh? Seems somebody tore the cloth on the pool table again. Whenever anybody tears the cloth on a pool table down there, the first guy they accuse of it is me. That's ridiculous. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm always the guy that does it. <laughs> That's because I'm... Come in. Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee. Hello there, Mr. Old-timer. Hi, old-timer. Hello there, kids. Just thought I'd stop in on my way to the studio. Studio? What studio? Photograph studio, kid. Yeah? Get my picture took for an advertisement. <laughs> I see. He used to sleep under bridges, Molly, but now he switched to culverts. <laughs> no. This is for baby food, Johnny. Yeah? Borg Snackers Baby Bunting Baby Food. Why on earth should they want you to pose for baby food advertisement? They'll have a caption under the picture, daughter. It'll say, you want your baby to grow up and look like this? <laughs> no! And stuff the little so-and-so with Borg Snackers Baby Food. <laughs> 
something like that. <laughs> well, somehow, old-timer, I never figured you for a photographer's model. Oh, I've done about everything in my day, Johnny. And it's been a long day. <laughs> I've been a dog sitter, a potato chip smuggler, turtle painter. Turtle painter? Yep. Painted baby turtles for the souvenir trade. You know, greetings from Petoskey, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> or things move faster than this in Atlantic City. <laughs> Smart stuff like that. <laughs> what other odd jobs have you held, old timer? Ever do any wing walking or abalone diving? No, Johnny, but I spent a mighty happy summer one year as a dusk jockey. No, I think you mean a disc jockey, don't you, Mr. Old Timer? No, daughter, a dusk jockey. Always rode the dark horse in the last race about sunset. <laughs> One time at Narragansett. Hey, where are you going, daughter? Oh, I have to put my potatoes on for dinner, Mr. Oldtimer. If you'll excuse me. Sure, 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 sure. That's a fine little girl you got there, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Minds me of a lady I used to know when I was a needle picker on a dude ranch out in Wyoming. A needle picker on a dude ranch? Yep, I took care of the dudes that fell off of horses into the cactus. <laughs> Sir, this girl... Hey, am I keeping you from something, Johnny? You keep looking at your watch. Oh, no, but uh, this is my wife's birthday, see? And I'm going to whip up a little surprise party for her after dinner. You want to come? Oh, I'd love to, Johnny, but I can't make it. No? Promised Bessie I'd come over and fix a drip in her kitchen. Oh, a faucet leaking? No, the ice man is calling. Bessie wants me to throw him out. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you give daughter a happy... Uh, give her a nice party, Johnny. Huh? So long, now! So long, Billy Mills in the orchestra, and here I'll stay. Say, Wimp, I can't hear you. Oh, oh, yeah, Wimp, a, a surprise party. Tonight. No, 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 it's not my birthday, Wimp. It's Molly's birthday. Huh? Hey, yeah, she thinks I forgot what day this is, and she won't remind me to either. Okay, eight o'clock, boy. Bring her, oh, here, here she comes. Oh, what say, Waldo? Oh. Okay, Waldo. So long, Waldo. Oh, Waldo again? <laughs> Yeah, old nervous Waldo. <laughs> the eager beaver type Waldo is. I all... Huh? Say, is something troubling you, McGee? What's the matter? You seem awfully jittery this afternoon. Me jittery? <laughs> What's the difference about today from any other day? Nothing. Here, look at that right hand, kiddo. Steady as a rock. That's your left hand. Oh. <laughs> your right hand is on the desk with your thumb in the inkwell. Huh? <laughs> 
Oh, my gosh. Hand me a blotter, will you? Thanks. Don't worry about me, though. I'm okay. I just... Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. So nice to see you. Hello, my dear. And good day to you, thimble brain. <laughs> What's new, Lancelot? Is it true? Is it true you've discovered a way to raise the city's health rate 50% by retiring? <laughs> No, quite the contrary, Prong knows. I've been busier than ever lately. That's all. In fact, there was quite a crowd gathered in front of my office when I got downtown this morning. Crowd? Waiting for you. Did they have a rope, Doc? <laughs> I've been expecting that for a long now, time. Now, McGee, but, uh... don't talk like that to Dr. Gamble. This crowd you mentioned, Doctor, were they all your patients? No, they weren't waiting for me, Molly. They were gathered around a man who was lying on his face in the oh, street. Oh, dear. I rushed over to him naturally to see what I could do. Oh, my gosh, Doc. Was he hit by a car? No, he dropped a half dollar down a sidewalk grating. <laughs> he had a long stick and I had some chewing gum, so we both got two bits of piece out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Still splitting fees, eh, malpractice? <laughs> Hey, Doctor, how's Miss Tremaine these days? Have you seen her lately? Indeed, I have, Molly. As a matter of fact, I'm seeing Fifi tonight. They're going to a party. Oh, good. Will Mayor Latrivia be there, too? I'm afraid so. He's taking her. <laughs> no kidding. Cut you out again, eh, did he, Doc? <laughs> she must be pretty much in love with Latrivia, eh, Doc? No, she isn't. Oh? No, and it's just a little sickening, too. The way he hangs around her house all the time. Apparently, the man has no pride at all. Oh, mm. I tell you, Doctor, love does funny things to dignity. Oh, I remember one time I went to a high school dance with Otis Cadwallader, and McGee hid under our front steps to see if Otis would try to kiss me. <laughs> but did he try? I'll say he tried. Molly squealed, and I leapt up on the porch, and Otis ducked around the side of the house, and Molly's dad opened the front door and booted me over a four foot. <laughs> Probably had it coming anyhow. But what would you think of a mayor who spent all Saturday evening sitting in front of Miss Tremaine's house just to see who she went out with? Heavenly days, the mayor. Mm -hmm. Did you see him there, Doctor? See him? I sat with him. <laughs> well, I'd better shove along, kids. Many happy returns. <laughs> many happy what, Doctor? Uh, many happy retired people live in trailers. Hold on. <laughs> happy retired people live in trailers. What do you mean by that? Dude? Oh, you know, Doc, he don't make any sense. He's as skippy as a barefooted kid on a hot sidewalk. Why, I mind one time... I... Say, I wish we were going to a party tonight, McGee, don't you? We haven't been to a party... A party? No, not tonight. Why should we go to any party tonight? Well, no particular reason, dearie. I just happen to think that we haven't been asked anywhere since that affair at the country club. Yeah. When you gave the Toastmaster a hot foot and he sat down so quick he got his elbow in the butter. <laughs> <laughs> they claimed that was the first hot buttered Toastmaster they'd ever had out there. Hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Hello there, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Say, did you get my message okay about that, uh, the deal? You know, the, the deal? What deal? Uh, oh, oh, the deal. Yeah, sure, I got it, pal. That deal is okay, as per your quote. Good. I uh, checked the deal with my, uh, my partner, and it's okay with her. With my partner, too, pal. Mm -hmm. We're in. Good, good. Uh, the, the figure on that deal is uh, eight. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah, eight, eight. Good deal, pal. Good deal. Say, if you boys are going to deal around again, cut me in on this. <laughs> How's your wife these days, Miss Wilcox? Oh, she's fine. She was asking about you just today, Molly. Oh, she's awfully sweet. I hope you told her I was well. No, she didn't ask that. She asked me if you knew about Johnson's liquid wax. And I said, of course you did. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so she said, did you know how Johnson's liquid wax cleans as it wax polishes? Yeah. Because it contains a powerful cleansing ingredient that loosens grease and dirt as you apply it yeah. so that the dirt comes off when you buff it like that. Yeah, 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 sure. We know all that. But what that got to do with how my wife... And when she asked... <laughs> When she asked if you knew about just touching up the heavy wear spots on your floor with Johnson's liquid wax so that you only have to give it a complete waxing three or four times a year, I just chuckled because I knew that you knew hey, that. Hey, 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 waxy. Yes, pal? Isn't your wife about through asking questions because No, I... no, she's pretty gabby, pal. Hmm. 
Well, I've got to get going. Yes. I've got to go down to the How Come Chop Suey Parlor. <laughs> to a friend of mine. <laughs> How comes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, How has some genuine Chinese prints he wants to show me. Real Chinese prints. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see those. Did he do them himself with watercolors or what? No, his waiters did them with muddy feet. Oh. But they'll wipe right up. Oh. See you later. <laughs> Chinese prince. <laughs> My gosh, that guy will do anything for a laugh to get out the door on. And such a little bitty laugh, too. Hey, where are you going, kiddo? I have to take another look at the potatoes. Oh. I'll be in the kitchen if you want anything. Okay, Tootsie. Ah, there, and nobody, oh boy, oh boy, she don't suspect a thing. Is she ever going to be a surprise cookie when... Now, let me see now. I got a case of root beer ordered. Sandwiches are coming over. Everybody's invited, and their wives. <laughs> Gotta call Kramer about the ice cream. Oh, oh. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, Teeny. <laughs> Come in. Okay, mister. Hey, where's Miss McGee? Where is she, mister? Where? She just stepped out in the kitchen, sis. Why? I want to go out and wish her a happy birthday. I'll go home. Happy... No, 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 no. Shh. Oh, my gosh. No, sis. Mm-hmm. Gee, don't you want her to have a happy birthday, mister, hmm? Well, of course I do, but I don't okay, want... Okay, then I'll sing to her, too. I'll sing, happy birthday hey. to you. No, hey, no, no. Happy... No, sis, please. No, no, no. Hey, look. How'd you know it was her birthday, anyhow? Oh, I get around, mister. Oh. I hear things. Oh. Dr. Gamble told his nurse, and she told her cousin, and he mentioned it to his uh, brother-in-law. Yeah, his brother-in-law that works for Kramer's Drugstore, and when Wally Toops got an ice cream cone, Dr. Gamble's nurse's cousin's uh, brother-in-law... Okay, 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 skip it. (laughs) But look, Teeny, I'm trying to give a surprise party for Mrs. McGee tonight, so I I don't want to... I can come. What time, mister? I can come. (laughs) (laughs) That rat says this party's not for kids. Look, you wouldn't like it, Teeny. No games, no prizes, just, just a lot of stale old people. Oh, Gee, it does sound dull, mister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Now, let, let's forget the party. Forget the birthday. Mrs. McGee's liable to walk in here any minute now. Okay, I don't... mister. Only it's somebody else's birthday today, too, I betcha. The Boy Scouts of America. Oh, it is, eh? Sure. Hmm? I says it is, eh? What is? Today is. It's one. Their birthday. Oh. The Boy Scouts. Of America. I know it. <laughs> You know what? Our teacher says the Boy Scouts was founded 39 years ago, and all this week is their anniversary, and Boy Scouts have lots of adventure, and I think everybody ought to be a Boy Scout when they're 12 years old except girls. <laughs> Don't you, Mr. Moon? Don't yes, you, Moon? You're absolutely right, Teeny. Scouts not only have a lot of fun, but being a scout gives a boy a good, clean start in life. It teaches him loyalty and honesty. And how to make a fire with sticks, I bet you. Yeah. <laughs> But I better go, mister. Only, uh, gee, I wish I could give Miss McGee my present before I go. <laughs> will you give it to her for me, mister? Hmm, will you? Hmm? Present? Oh, no, sis, you, you shouldn't have bothered. Oh, it isn't much, Mr. McGee, but you and Miss McGee are always so nice to little children, and, <laughs> well, it is all that I possess. Give it to her with my love, mister. Here, my Crayola. Gee, <laughs> Teeny. Yeah, why, she, she'll love this. That's just what she needed. <laughs> all broke in good, too. <laughs> so she don't have to bust all the points off of them herself. I hope she likes them. Well, I guess I'll go now. Why, she'll love these. And here, look. Uh, here, take this half buck. No, take a buck. Buy yourself some more, honey. Mrs. McGee will cherish these until... Oh, gee, you are nice to little children. Oh, no, <laughs> Hey, Willie, it worked. Huh? <laughs> Willie, here's a dime for your old Crayolas and 90 cents for sodas. Oh, boy, so <laughs> The 
King's Men and the Pussycat Song. This is the story about a guy who came home late one night. Right. Must have been 2 or 3 a.m. or thereabout. I gotta get some sleep beyond as he turned out the light. Must have been too tired to put the cat out. Whether he dreamed what happened, or if he really heard it, he wouldn't bet. But he said it sounded like two felines a singing a sad duet. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you crazy kitty, we will serenade the moon. Stop meow. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you crazy kitty, we will sing a little tune. Stop meow. When the folks got home tonight, it's well for their about. They locked the door and they forgot to put me out. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you pretty kitty. Meow, not meow. This is me, your boyfriend, Tom. Not meow. This is Tom, the atom bomb. Not meow. I assure you I'd come meow if only I knew how. They tell me that you really are the cat's meow. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you pretty kitty. Not meow. Yes, meow. Not meow. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you pretty kitty. We will serenade the moon. Not meow. Come meow, come meow, come meow, you pretty kitty. We will sing a little tune. Not meow. Not meow, not meow, that's all you ever say. You better change your tune or Tom will go away. fast. Look, Kramer, don't send the ice cream over till about 10.30, see? And wrap that bottle of perfume real pretty. Yeah, it's her birthday, and I'm giving her a surprise. Uh, oh, 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 here's a, oh, okay, Waldo. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'd take care of it tomorrow, and stop calling me up about it. Okay, Waldo. Goodbye. Say, so your That's... friend Waldo's making quite a fuss over a torn pool table cover, isn't he, McGee? Well, it's like I said, old Waldo's a fussy type guy. He's been kind of shaky ever since one day in 1927 when he, he ran out of gas in the Holland Tunnel in a borrowed car that the owner didn't know he'd borrowed it. <laughs> and Waldo, with an expired driver's license and the back seat full of home brew, and as he discovered later, two Chinese aliens in the rumble seat. Heavenly <laughs> days, what'd the police do to him? Well, they pushed him out of the tunnel, bought him two gallons of gas, and told him to get the New Jersey out of there. <laughs> Uh, what am I standing here yammering about old Waldo for? This is February the 8th, kiddo. That's what you've been saying all day, dearie, yes, but sir. just what is it? Come in. Oh, it's Mayor Latrib. You do come in, Your Honor. Hi, Latrib, old man. Glad to see you. Hello, Mrs. McGee. McGee, am I too early? Too early for what, Mr. Mayor? My goodness. Oh, up. sure, you are not too early, Latrib. You're welcome any old time, too early or late. Come on in and sit down. Relax. Like me. Hmm. How's everything at the city hall? Splendid, thank you. In fact, we've just completed balancing the city budget. I suppose you people budget yourselves. Well, we should, I suppose, but we don't. McGee is an advocate of the HIP system. Uh, what is the HIP system? A uh, hand in pocket, Latrib. <laughs> Put your hand in your pocket, and if the pocket is empty, you don't spend that dough you were reaching for. <laughs> Better than a budget, really. I agree. Credit is a wonderful thing, but it can be abused. It's very disheartening to pay for a dead horse. A dead horse. That's a pretty silly thing to purchase in the first place. Oh, now, McGee, <laughs> don't jump to conclusions. Maybe well. the mayor needed the hide to cover some baseball. Uh, uh, wait just a minute. The expression, paying for a dead horse, is merely used... Personally, I should think they ought to pay you to haul the thing away. <laughs> what did he die of, natural causes or foul play by a bankrupt bookie? <laughs> Look, this was not a real animal. I was speaking metaphorically when you I know, said I that I... You know, I had a Shetland pony once that didn't seem like a real animal either. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed almost human. We called him Soft Touch because he was always good for a couple of bucks. <laughs> <laughs> What's your horse's name, Latrev? He didn't have any mane. No? A name. Oh. Look, he was not an actual horse. Oh, a I mare. Usually... You see, Molly, technically speaking, only a male horse is a horse. A female horse is a mare. I see. And yes. a steak horse is called a filly, isn't yes, it? Yes, right. <laughs> Does a dead horse cost, Mr. Mayor? I don't know, nor care. Well, it's uh, ridiculous and argument. Huh? I make a list. I don't know why I permit oh, myself. You should... 
Oh, my goodness, I almost forgot. Huh? Forgot what, Legit? You know, the surprise. Are you ready? Huh? Oh, oh, my gosh, sure, let's go. What's this all about, boy? Oh, it's just a little surprise for you, Molly. Come on in, everybody. What? Surprise, surprise, surprise. Well, heavenly deeds, what on earth is this? Many happy returns, Molly. Here's a little gift, Mrs. McGee. Happy birthday. But, Mr. Wimple, what's on earth? Oh, it isn't much, really. Just some nylon hose. Nylon hose? Why, this package must weigh 20 pounds. Yes, it's for your garden. There's 50 feet of it. <laughs> Hey, Molly, happy birthday. Hope you like this. Oh, Doctor, that's wonderful. But look, boy. Well, how's about it, kiddo? <laughs> Some surprise, eh? Yes, it is, and I have a surprise for you, too. Yeah? This isn't my birthday. Huh? My birthday is in April. Who? <laughs> April? Your birthday's in April? Oh, my gosh. Well, let's have a party anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then I better call the hospital. I forgot to tell them where I am. Oh. Hello? 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 Hey, your phone's dead. Dead? What do you mean, dead? Oh, dear. Wasn't today your last day to pay the phone bill, McGee? February the 8th. <laughs> February the 8th. Oh, my gosh. That's why I marked a ring around the counter of all the time. you know what a beautiful luster Johnson's Liquid Wax will give your wood floors. But if you want to get that luster with almost unbelievable speed and ease, use Johnson's Beauty Floor Polisher. This wonderful electric floor polisher makes the wax surface of your floor shine brilliantly in a few seconds. The big whirling Beauty Floor brush does all the work. All you do is guide the Beauty Floor Polisher across the floor. Tomorrow, buy a Beauty Floor electric floor polisher from your Johnson dealer. Or rent one by the day if you prefer. Ladies and gentlemen, not too many years ago, tuberculosis was the number one killer of all diseases. Now it is down to seven. And the reason we are making progress against it is because we are learning to diagnose it earlier and treat it efficiently. Every adult in this country should have his chest x-rayed at intervals. In this way, it would be possible to stamp out tuberculosis almost completely. In some communities, and maybe yours, there is a free x-ray service. Use it if you have one, but somehow or other, find out yourself. Do it now. And get it off your chest. Good night. Good night, all. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Sugar McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? A question for our women listeners. Who leaves the smudges on the top of your table? Well, I guess no matter who leaves them there, you have to clean them off. Then why not use the cream wax that cleans so quickly, dries so quickly, polishes so quickly that using it is practically as easy as dusting. It's Johnson's Cream Wax, and it's the fastest wax furniture polish you can buy. For example, Johnson's Cream Wax will completely clean and polish an end table in 80 seconds. This wax, you see, not only cleans in a moment, it dries and polishes in a moment. And Johnson's Cream Wax contains no oil to catch and hold dust. Clean and polish your furniture as easily as you dust it with the fastest wax polish you can buy. Johnson's Cream Wax. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. WMAQ and WMAQ-FM, NBC in Chicago.